Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christian with PerfectStockAlert.com, a 100% free service for smart investors and traders. All we ask in return, please prepare a friend. Today we're going to be looking at the breakout trading method. This is probably the easiest trading method that's actually out there. Um, it can be used by short-term momentum traders, day traders, or uh, longer-term buy and hold traders. I'll show you how to actually uh, uh, use this on those different methods. Uh, the first thing you need to know is how to find them. You have to run scans to find these opportunities. And there's two basic scans you can use that are really easy. I'm sure there's more, but uh, the, the two easiest would be number one, the 52 week highs. If, if you're looking from the, the bullish side, the, bear, the bulls perspective, um, you'd be looking for 52 week highs or new 52 week highs. Um, that would be the, the method for finding them or one of the methods. Uh, the other method would be looking for situations where you have a close above the upper Bollinger Band line. Now this is a chart of about three months uh, and each one of these candlesticks is one day's price activity. So when you look for those scans, you're looking at the end of each day, you're going to be analyzing the, the market or the, the chart that you're looking at uh, for situations like that. If you use the method regarding the uh, Bollinger Bands, you'll be able to find situations that can uh, set up and uh, break out but not be new 52 week highs. So uh, you have to admit there's going to be a lot of situations if you're just looking at 52 week highs that are doing the same thing that you're looking for. However, they're not making a new high, therefore you will never see them. So it may be better to actually use the uh, Bollinger Band versus the 52 week high. But in any event, you can use either one of those methods to find these. Um, basically what you're looking at here is uh, three key points and the first of which is must be a base or a consolidation period, a support line, uh, a rectangle trading zone, many different terminology you can be used for it but all it basically is is sideways activity. You had an advance up here and then price activity began to go up and go down and go up and go down and it wasn't actually doing anything other than going sideways, moving sideways. It was finding or building a support. Uh, this is caused because there is a buy pressure right here and it's keeping a floor on price. However, there's also a sell pressure right here that's keeping a ceiling on price. And so it's not actually going anywhere. It's just sitting there trending sideways. Uh, these are great opportunities. Uh, you do not want to be a buyer when you see these set up because you don't know which direction they're going to break. They could break up and they could break down. So what you want to do is run your scans looking for situations that have just broken out. So back here you can see that on this particular day you broke out to the upside. And a breakout basically means you broke out above, in this case, above uh, previous resistance which is this line right here. You broke out of that and closed above that. So this candlestick has a close above that resistance line. It tells you that you've broken out. Now when resistance is broken, typically it becomes support. So you see this breakout here, and now you could buy the next day right there at the open knowing that this support right here is going to be the floor of price, the new floor in price. And so price activity will drive higher away from that floor. And that's what happens right here. Here we can see another situation set up doing the exact same thing. You had an advance and then she started to move sideways, which is also called kicking. We have uh, one day down, one day up, one day down, one day up, one day down, that kind of thing. Just back and forth. It's price activity moving sideways. It's consolidating, forming a base. You draw your uh, resistance line off of the highs of the candlestick or the highs, highs of the uh, uh, wicks off the tops. I prefer the candlesticks themselves. And then you look for the breakout where price actually closes above that. When you get that signal, that's your buy signal. You want to be a buyer the very next day at the open. Let me clean these charts up. All right, just a couple things you need to know. Right off the bat, like I said before, you do not want to be a buyer during the formation of the base because, like I said, you don't know which direction it's going to break and you don't know how long it's going to last. These bases can last for months and months at a time, so you, you don't want to just be a buyer and holding. Uh, another thing to know is that the longer the base formation, the longer it's been established, the stronger it becomes. So if you have a very short-term uh, base like we have back here, it's not as strong as this one over here. Okay. Uh, also, I would caution you to be careful not to uh, count on bases that are too uh, wide. In this case here, it's a very tight trading range. We like that. It's very strong uh, support. And the one following is even tighter. We like this. This is very good. 
If you have a situation that looks like this as being your support, it's not exactly the same thing. I mean, I understand that it could be viewed that way, but it's not going to have the same quality as what we're looking for right now. Regarding the quality of the breakout, especially on a situation where you're talking about a breakout to the upside, in this situation here, you have a breakout to the upside, and you want to see increased volume on that breakout. If you do not see that, the odds are good that the breakout could fail and be a fake, and then ultimately you'd be buying when you shouldn't. Uh, when you shouldn't be. Uh, here, you've got the same situation where you break out to the upside, good volume behind that, like that. Here, you don't really have a base. You have uh, move to the upside and then kind of pull back and then kind of slope up. It's kind of sloppy if it's a base at all. And then your advance here is on no real volume. So there's enough telltale evidence here to tell you just leave this one alone. Okay, so whenever you're looking at this situation, you've got to be asking yourself, where do I put my stop? Uh, what's my target uh, exit point, so forth and so on. So let me show you how I do this. From a short-term uh, momentum trader's perspective, this uh, breakout candlestick is your buy signal. So the next day, I'm going to be a buyer at the opening price, and I want to use this breakout candlestick right here. And the lowest point of that will be where I set my stop loss limit, the initial stop loss. And then as long as she continues to advance with high, higher lows and higher highs, I would stay with it. As soon as that stopped being the case, I would exit. So on this particular day, we got a lower low, I'm gone. Another method guys will use is when they see the breakout, there'll be a buyer here, keep the stop right here, and then just let it run. When it pulls back down, they'll leave it alone, just keep holding. Once she breaks out again and starts to move higher again, they'll take the stop that was here and they'll advance it to the low point here. As she continues to advance, they'll continue to do this. Let the pullback happen as long as she continues to advance they'll take the stop that was here and they'll advance it to here just keep advancing that stop as they go higher and higher this is more of a longer term uh, trading method but it will also work the three key elements to this trading model is the chart formation itself and volume you must have a nice support a nice base formation before you get the breakout then you must have a breakout and that breakout must be on increased volume if those three things are true You've got a good trade opportunity. Now, there's one key element here that will actually get a lot of guys to miss these opportunities, and that is that they will rely too heavily. I'm sorry, too heavily on their oscillators like the slow stock or the Williams percent R. So let me show you that right quick. All right, raise this thing up. Okay, here we are looking at the oscillator and price activity. And you'll notice that during this breakout point here, where you actually are wanting to be a buyer, there you're getting overbought already you're already overbought according to the uh, oscillator they can do that and still advance that doesn't just because they get up here above the uh, overbought condition of negative 20 on the Williams percent R or uh, overbought on the uh, any oscillator for that matter uh, they can still press higher from momentum uh, trader standpoint so don't think that that's going to somehow uh, you know make it so you can't trade these you can still trade these because remember when price breaks out the key thing to remember here is that it's actually sitting on a support line. It's really strong right now because what was once resistance will now start acting as support. So buying right here is really close to that support that's right there and your stop is right here. You have very limited loss, uh, very limited risk right there and lots of upside potential because price will continue to move from that breakout point up to the next level of resistance. I would say about 90% of the time you're going to see a breakout and the oscillator will be in the overbought condition. Uh, I would did not uh, concern myself with the oscillator and these breakout trading opportunities. Here's yet another opportunity seen on Abbott Laboratories. Uh, broke out two days ago. Nice little support going on here. Breakout here, increasing the volume. Notice the volume rises above this moving average of volume. And that's important to note. You're getting above average volume on a breakout. That's good. One word of caution here, a lot of guys will look at um, price activity and they'll say, hey, you're making new highs here. This is a breakout. Uh, this is not the same thing as what I'm talking about in this video. What you really want to see is price advance off of that support line, off of that base. If you don't have that, uh, you're going to have a, a harder time with the trade. It's going to be overextended a lot sooner than you think. And so it's going to um, basically have you buying at the wrong point. So. Uh, in this case here, you get price activity advance here, pulling down, doing all kinds of stuff, but there's no actual um, base formation created, and that would be a completely different type of trading thing, and I would not uh, consider this in any way, shape, or form as being the same thing. Look for that base.
then the breakout and check it for volume. This particular trading method can also be used from a bearish perspective or a short sellers perspective. Uh, you would look for situations either be in the 52 week lows, new 52 week lows, or situation where price is closed below the lower Bollinger Band line. Uh, that would be the same everything else. Okay, You look for a situation where you have price activity moving sideways, it's got a nice little uh, support and a resistance line, and when you see that breakdown, in this case a breakdown of support, that support line will then turn into resistance, so you, the very next day you want to be selling the stock at this level with a stop at this uh, high point here, expecting a move to continue lower down to the next support line. Uh, this will work, like I said, uh, either way, bullish or bearish. Now there's one little detail you might want to know about. In a situation where you're looking at a sell-off or a breakdown uh, or a bearish uh, trade of this uh, nature, you do not have to concern yourself with strong volume on the breakdown. Uh, that's not required as strongly as it is on the breakout to the upside. So just in case you're wondering, uh, you'll see that time to time and you'll need to know that, okay? Now you know. Please take a moment to review our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinion only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of an investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit loss or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.